My dear compatriots, tomorrow, April 4th, 2024, we celebrate the 64th anniversary of our country's independence. To everyone, I extend my warmest congratulations. I pay tribute to each and every one of you for your attachment to the cardinal virtues of peace and democracy, which make up our future. We have just lived in a peaceful manner, testifying once again to the maturity of our people, the vitality of our democracy, and the strength of our institutions. We should all be proud of this great performance. This year again, by divine grace, the national holiday takes place under the sign of spiritual communion with Easter Holy Week, which has just concluded, and the month of Ramadan, which is also drawing to a close. Given the circumstances instead of the traditional parade, I will chair a ceremony to raise the sober and symbolic colors tomorrow at the Palace of the Republic. Tonight, as we celebrate our newfound freedom, my thoughts go to our valiant resistance fighters, famous or unknown, who gave themselves body and soul to defy the colonial system and its so-called civilizing mission to defend the freedom of our people and their values of culture and civilization. I would also like to salute with respect and affection our veterans who sacrificed their youth far from their families at the cost of their freedom and their lives. I pay vibrant tribute to my predecessors. President Sangho Abule Abdule Wade and Maki Saul, who each made their contribution to the work of national construction. It is on the basis of these legacies that I want to continue with you our collective quest for the Senegal of our dreams. My dear compatriots, the national holiday honors our defense and security forces. To you, officers, non-commissioned officers, and enlisted members who have chosen the risky profession of arms, I reaffirm the gratitude of the nation. I express to you my pride, my support, and my complete confidence in your missions in the service of the homeland, peace in Africa, and in the world. I salute the memory of those fallen on the field of honor and wish a speedy recovery to the wounded. The state will always stand with their families with care and compassion. The theme of this edition, the armed forces at the heart of national cohesion, challenges us with its topicality and relevance. It reminds us that beyond the ceremonial part, the national holiday is above all an opportunity for individual and collective introspection on our way of living together. Our defense and security forces, under the concept of arming, symbolizing the diversity and cohesion of their socio-cultural components, offer us a fine example of what Senegal, living together, should be like. As supreme leader of the armed forces and guarantor of national unity, I am determined to preserve our living together inherited from our ancestors. Because we only have one homeland, Senegal, ours that we all love, which does not start with us and does not end with us. In this spirit, my role, and I fully assume it, is to reach out to everyone, to bring together, reassure, soothe, and reconcile in order to consolidate the peace, security, and stability essential to the economic and social development of our country. From east to west, from north to south, I hope that our dear Senegal remains united and indivisible, one in harmony with our national motto. One people, one goal. We owe it to ourselves, we owe it to our children, we owe it to future generations. This is why our vibrant youth, the beating heart of the nation, will remain at the center of my concerns. Dear young people of Senegal, make real your dreams, your aspirations, and your legitimate ambitions to succeed in order to be useful to yourselves, to your families, to your communities, and to your country.
Education, career training, employment and entrepreneurship for young people and women remain major challenges to overcome. I will make it a high priority for public policies in consultation with the private sector. To this end, we must revisit existing mechanisms, improve and rationalize them so that they better meet the needs of employment and other income-generating activities for young people. To encourage job creation, I intend to rely on a strong private sector because it is supported by the state based on our priority needs. We will work together to endogenize our economy. Of course, the international private sector will have its full role to play. The Senegalese are brave, but they are tired and expect solutions from us to combat the high cost of living. The question of the cost of living particularly concerns me and commands my full attention. In the days to come, strong measures will be taken in this direction after the consultations that I will undertake with the stakeholders concerned. My dear compatriots, from independence to the present day, our political, institutional, and judicial system has experienced many adventures, some happier than others. Sixty-four years later, the time seems to me to have come to learn the lessons of our successes and failures for public governance that is more modern, more republican, and more respectful of human rights. This is why, after resigning from my position as Secretary General of my past party to put myself above the fray, I will convene broad consultations with the political class and civil society on the reform of the electoral system, in particular. The replacement of the Senate by an independent national electoral commission with a strengthening of its operating means and its prerogatives. The rationalization of the number of political parties, as well as their financing and registration on the electoral register, concomitant with the issuance of the national identity document. Furthermore, to restore the image of justice, give it the value it deserves, and reconcile it with the people in whose name it is rendered. I mean professionally magistrates, lawyers, court clerks, and other justice officials, university professors, and citizens. I intend to establish virtuous governance based on the ethics of responsibility and accountability. In addition, I will without delay initiate a bold policy of good economic and financial governance through the relentless fight against corruption, criminal repression of tax evasion, and illicit financial flows, the protection of whistleblowers, the fight against the misappropriation of public funds and money laundering, with amnesty for lenders and their profit sharing under certain conditions. The publication of the reports of the Inspector General of the Court of Auditors and the Office of National Fight Against Corruption, OFNAC. Likewise, the exploitation of our natural resources will be addressed through the disclosure of the beneficial ownership of extractive companies in accordance with the EITI standard for the audit of the gas and oil mining sector more sustained protection of local content for the benefit of the national private sector. Furthermore, I would like to tell all our private partners that they are welcome in Senegal in accordance with the laws and regulations in force. The rights of the investor will always be protected, as well as the interests of the state and the populations. To our friendly and partner countries, I would like to assure you that Senegal remains an open and welcoming country for all. We will constantly strive to maintain and strengthen good neighborly relations and active solidarity within our community organizations, notably ECOWAS and the African Union, as true to the pan-Africanist ideal of Leopold Sidar Senghor, one of the founding fathers of the Organization of African Unity, we remain committed to the construction of African integration and the achievement of the objectives of the African Continental Free Trade Area. Our foreign partners from all walks of life are of equal dignity to us. To all, we owe respect and consideration, 
and from all, we demand respect and consideration. We will remain committed to fairer and more inclusive global governance while respecting the equal dignity of the values of culture and civilization. My dear compatriots, the national holiday, symbol of our sovereignty, reminds us that we are alone in the face of our destiny and that no one will do for us what we are not willing to do for ourselves. We have the historical responsibility to consolidate our sovereignty by breaking the chains of economic dependence through the permanent cult of work and results. In this spirit, the administration must act at all levels in a more welcoming and more efficient manner for users of public services. We must ban from our practices undue procedures and formalities which alter the effectiveness of the state. With this objective, I intend to invest massively in the digitalization of services and administrative procedures. Likewise, there is an urgent need to gain our food sovereignty by investing more and better in agriculture, fishing and breeding, the three nourishing breasts of our country. I am particularly keen to ensure that the substantial subsidies spent each year in the agricultural campaign benefit real producers and not intermediary players. Ultimately, my dear compatriots, the independence that we are celebrating tomorrow is certainly a festive event, but also and above all a test of resilience and greatness for the nation. Our merit and our honor is to pass the test by displaying resolute confidence in ourselves, to overcome our fears and our doubts, to overcome the obstacles before us, and to continue together our united march towards our common destiny. Hand in hand and shoulder to shoulder. This is what I invite you to do in the communion of hearts and minds. Long live Senegal in peace and security, united, free and prosperous. Good evening and happy Independence Day.